What scientific experiment would you conduct if there were no questions of money and moral standards? Gilligan's Island Experiment 100 people of completely different backgrounds, wealth, and character ended up on a distant island after the shipwreck. Let's see what kind of civilization will develop from all this. Then you will need to repeat the experiment 50 more times to compare the results with each other. There was a book about something like this. In general, there are a number of studies on this topic. Google it. I think it'll be interesting. Societies after a shipwreck or something like that. I want to send someone into space without a spacesuit. I've read about everything that could happen there, but for now, I just want to check it out on video. I will put five mentally normal and healthy people in one institution with five psychopaths, crazy killers. They will have group activities in pairs of two from each group, and these activities will be of two types, moral and immoral. Then I will summarize how these activities affect people in both groups. Changed. This will not be a prison. The test subjects will be ordinary volunteers. Prison is a completely different case, and the results of the experiment at Stanford Prison were completely different. This group of two people will participate in the killing, but psychopaths will be prohibited from killing their partner or anyone else in the experiment. I would hold the Olympics, in which each athlete would be pumped up to the board with drugs. I think that after this, the current opportunities and standards would have increased dramatically. I would see if the ape tribe could dominate the rest if they were taught how to make and use weapons and other primitive technologies. It is also interesting whether they will be able to use all the acquired knowledge and begin to expand their empire. We humans already know one interesting thing about chimpanzees. They don't teach each other. They often just watch. A monkey is watching another monkey do something. People teach each other. In youth, we initially have trust in other people, so we believe that what we are taught is the truth. Adults educate each other, thereby forming mutually beneficial relationships. This is what gave us a huge advantage in the development of material cultures such as stone tools, which are made according to similar patterns by different groups of people. From childhood, we learn from each other much more than other apes. If a monkey learns how to make a spear, then he will not return to his tribe and will not actively teach others how to make a spear for the benefit of the pack. But those who see how a chimpanzee makes a spear will make their own by watching the process. I've always wanted to try breeding a winter blooming rose. Moral standards will not be shaken, but such a gigantic number of roses in a greenhouse, decades of selective breeding, is likely to require an astronomical sum. This is one of the most interesting responses in this thread without being cruel or obscure. This experiment seems so simple and achievable, but I fully understand that it takes, as you said, an unrealistic amount of money and work to achieve the desired result. I would train gorillas in a gym, see how much they can pump. At the same time, I would pour a hell of a lot of steroids into them. Then I would drug this whole army of beasts with cocaine and let them go to an empty mall. I want to see which stores they like and which they don't. Well, for the sake of science, all this is bullshit. I always wanted to watch athletes from different sports fight each other. Will they fight differently at all? UFC fighters will be walking to destroy other athletes one by one until the biathlon guy pulls out a gun and starts firing. How long a decapitated head remains conscious? All we have now is all sorts of tales that can often be exaggerated. I always wanted to know the unequivocal answer, but you know, moral standards. We have already carried out the experiment, seven to 10 seconds. So start planning what your last words will be. So far, I came up with, this is the rooftop. Bro, you won't have lungs. I would like to see what a society of children alone would do if they were born without adults. Of course, it would be necessary to raise them while they are babies, but then how will they develop the language, morality, mythology, culture, and over the years, how would they cope with growing up without the role models of the surrounding adults? Although unethical, I think that such an experiment would answer a lot of questions in sociology, psychology, and philosophy. It's like watching the beginning of human society from scratch without external influence. Edit. Yes, I have read Lord of the Flies, however, it is a work of fiction. Near-death experiences and what people see. Well, I mean, basically, I'd like to kill a bunch of people and then bring them back to life. However, I'm sure that many of them will not return. Look at OA, an interesting series from Netflix just about a near-death experience. 
With the help of genetics, I would bring out a dozen children with fucking powerful abilities. They would run fucking fast and jump wildly high. Then I would organize an Olympics for athletes with super powerful abilities and find out what a person is really capable of. This is so different from what I just read about breeding winter roses. It's, uh, this entire thread is so diverse, it's amazing. Cloning dinosaurs. Are there any other options? Humanity has a couple of films that clearly show that cloning dinosaurs is a bad idea for our planet. So you think we should go to the moon or Mars? You know, either one works, I think. Oh man, I love this question. There are a ton of geoengineering experiments I would love to do if they weren't both A, illegal, B, insanely expensive, C, likely to lead to death and destruction. Iron fertilizer. Essentially, dumping massive amounts of iron dust into the ocean will result in algae blooms, which are supposed to absorb a bunch of carbon and help mitigate global warming. Cloud seeding, space mirrors, dropping an atomic bomb into a volcano. Well, you know, ordinary things. Human genetic modifications. Now, there are people who agree to this at a conscious age. However, to do this with an embryo, or to see through the DNA of the parents, what we can do to improve a person. It would be amazing. Improvements in intelligence, memory, physical characteristics, adding gills for swimming underwater, changing visual abilities, the ability to see the full spectrum of light, improving hearing, or to be able to hear the full spectrum of sound, immunity to all diseases and harmful bacteria, the ability to eat almost everything to satisfy hunger. I would like to clone some little Hitlers and see how they grow in different environments. No! I would place them, for example, in the following conditions. A loving family that makes you sick of how perfect they are. A Jewish family. A family of artists in which his talent is encouraged. This entire thing, I haven't, I haven't even finished yet. It's amazing. <laughs> a violent family, similar to the one in which he grew up. A family of scientists. And finally, the most ethically corrupt environment. The family of politicians. And it will take a bunch more cloned baby Hitlers so that we finally decide what percentage of people would kill a little Hitler. <laughs> It just got better and better! Teach your child to misuse words for everything around and see how long it takes for him to adapt. Seems like quite a few people do this to kids for no reason. Seriously, don't do this for anything. It's terrible. This post is based on the concept of moral scum. Changed. Several people have mentioned that this is the same as learning a second language, but I want to explain why it is not. When you learn a second language, you are assigning a new word, which has no previous meaning, to a concept you already know. That is, you know what an apple is, and you say apple over it when you learn a word in English. But in the case we are talking about, you do not learn a new word, but take a word that is already assigned to another concept and try to apply it somewhere else, while forgetting about the original connection. Our brains are not very good at breaking neural connections. So you start to think you're biting into a car or apple, getting on the roof, car, and driving in blue to work. This is very difficult, because our brain automatically tries to learn something new, but it does not have a well-functioning mechanism for forgetting. Judging from the comments, it seems that some have come across a similar situation in one word and found it very difficult to readjust. I tend to think that this will really mentally break a person. The experiment is considered optional. I've read a story about how a man taught his daughter that way and she accidentally killed him because when she was asked if there was anyone in the burning house he was locked in, she said no, meaning yes. We will organize two groups of children. One, only boys. The other, only girls. We will send them to two different islands. We will deliver food to them, usually robots, and will not give them information about anything regarding gender, sexuality, race, language, etc. And see how they develop. Also, never mention the opposite sex and racial diversity. Such an experiment would answer so many questions regarding psychology. Is sexual orientation a product of nature or nurture? Are people born with innate gender roles? Are humans naturally tribal and or xenophobic? Changed. A few people here are confusing attraction to the opposite sex with the desire to procreate. Some gay men want to have children too. Growing up without ever encountering the opposite sex? 
Hmm, interesting thought. If we are biologically wired to seek out the opposite sex to reproduce, but we don't know that the opposite sex even exists, what then? How children will grow with intermittent microdosing of LSD. Or how a child will grow up if his mother used LSD, MDMA, or psychoactive substances while pregnant with him. I would have a serial killer contest. The first person who successfully kidnap and kill 50 people will receive $10 million a year after the last murder, unless caught by the authorities and can prove the murders. How many people will agree to take part in this? How many victims will there be in the end? Can I just say that if they make a show or series on this topic, I will definitely watch. Raising a child among apes, mostly to see if something similar to Tarzan can come up and if a person can fully communicate with apes. In fact, there have been many cases where wild children have been raised with animals, most commonly dogs, and they are most related to humans. But I think it was the same with monkeys. Google feral children and you will find many articles and stories on the subject. Transplanting human brains into animals and vice versa. I think our psychology is too different for such a specific operation. Maybe start with human brain transplants first, change it and see if it works or not. Yeah, but imagine a dolphin in a human body trying to figure out how to actually move and what to do. <laughs> we are so fucked. Actually, I've thought about this a lot. I would arrange for two people exactly the same conditions throughout their lives. Now, I'm not just talking about similar scenarios, but everything from the temperature inside the womb to the people with whom they interact daily to the strength with which the wind blows during their conversation. And I would see if they are the same. On a living example, we would determine whether a person is born with some features or he develops them through little things all his life, the butterfly effect. Of course, such an experiment is impossible, even with an infinite amount of money, but it would be great to stir it up. Raising a child without punishing or rewarding him, just letting him do whatever he wants. And then we'll see what happens to their behavior when they grow up. They will continue to receive punishments and rewards from the environment. Such an experiment will only answer the question in what environment the child was born and will not destroy the genetic aspect inherent in behavior. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to share in the comments what specific experiment would you conduct if there were no questions of money and moral standards. And don't forget to check out our other videos.